Welcome to the Nitpicky Nerds Top 10. Number two, Top 10. Two twos for four. two. Two two twos for two. That was not horrible. You did that pretty fast. <laughs> I don't even know. We'll, we'll have to rewatch it to see what it looked like. We'll play it in slow mo, maybe. <laughs> probably, probably not. All right, so for our list, our criteria is... Let's go with criteria. It's yep. very important. Yep. Legacy, modern, EDH. We, so the main we don't really look at old standard. We Sometimes we are looking at like how good a card has been in modern over the years. Mm-hmm. Prioritizing things that dominate formats or create archetypes around them. Yep. Um, the Such car- as Delver of Secrets. Also, the card is a wing con. That it gets some... Right. It's like, just... Delver of Secrets, it's... For example, dominated legacy. Dominated legacy, and it has its own archetype, so it was obviously very high on our one ones for one list, which you should check out. Which you should check out if you have not watched it yet. We're also doing three threes for three after this, and then four fours for four, and then we'll probably stop forever and never make any more videos. Yeah, so look forward, looks look five month hiatus again. Yeah, we love the five month hiatus. All right, honorable mentions. Let's get so to the honorable mentions. They weren't quite good enough. We were but close. They're here. Uh, we have Duskwatch Recruiter, a two two for two. Pay three, or no? Yeah, two three. and a green. Two and a green. Three. Colon. Uh, look at the top four cards of your library. Put a creature from among them in your hands. That would be what it said if it wasn't. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put a creature from among them. Oh, three. You reveal them and put it into your hand. It's only three. Uh, this effect is super powerful. It was... I mean, that's not even all it does. We're only halfway done. Oh yeah, it's, it's it transforms. It transforms, but I have no idea what the name is. Can you tell me what it transforms into? <laughs> I thought about this for like fifteen minutes yesterday. Prowling Horde Howler is what it flips into. Mm-hmm. Making creature spells you cast cost one less. And then it has the... It flips if... From Duskwatch, it flips if no spells were cast and an upkeep. And then from the other side, Prowling Horde Howler. This is the, the very classic werewolf flip. Yeah, two spells cast, then you flip back to Duskwatch Recruiter. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy because usually with werewolves, you want the werewolf half. But the front half is the insane part. Yep. In most... In, in modern, you actually modern decisions, just like, want... The, the front half of this card. Oh, it's three mana draw card in in the company decks. Mm-hmm. Most you know, most of the time it's always three mana. You're picking. And you're draw, it's not drawing like oh a land. I'm drawing a creature. Yeah, always drawing. It's a creature. really strong. It's even good in EDH, honestly. It's okay. a really good mana sync. Yeah, it's a very good card. Uh, it was very good in standard for its time. Not that we talk about standard too much, but it was in those decks. It was in, and then it kind of moved it was into in, the modern. Yep, it was in a version of that company. Yep, band company in standard. What's next? Vexing Shusher. This one is only an EDH card. Only. Um, but we think it's really, real good. It's really weird. I forget exactly. It's 2-2 two, two for... What this card does. Gruel Hybrid, Gruel Hybrid. And you can pay a Gruel Hybrid to make a spell not be countered. This ah, not yes. be able to be countered this turn. Um, and it also can't be countered. It's a strong EDH card. So if you're just like in this big, dumb green-red deck, it's probably worth, it's probably worth your time. Especially um, if you're going to be playing things like Borg Mergmos and you want to be your Borg Oh, yeah, your deck revolves around your, your big dumb giant. Yeah, if you're big, if you're playing a big dumb giant, your deck revolves around your big dumb giant, and you don't want your big dumb giant to get countered, then we suggest Vesting Sister as the big dumb giant can't be countered guy. Yes. Also, you can Court of Calling it into play in response to a counter oh. spell and then go, Whoop! get you. And then you go, bitch. Please. Better have my money. No. We don't quote Rihanna here. That's not a thing we normally it do. It just happened. Oh, I forgot to mention our sponsor, by the way. Chili's. <laughs> They're known for their fajitas, ribs, and burgers. And, um, and not their baby back ribs anymore. Yes. So if you wanted to buy if you want to buy any of these cards and you're thinking, hey, I might need a vexing shusher for my Boar Burgmos deck, just head on down to Chili's. <laughs> uh, use the promo code BZ and Joe. To receive ten percent off. Not them picking their. Don't use the code. They're picking their. Use use our. At, you, we actually might need our full names. Uh, look us up on Facebook. Uh, find our full names. Yes. So, promo code BZ and Joe to save ten percent off your next purchase. <laughs> only magic cards. Of, though. You can of only, vaccine you, no, you can only save ten percent off of magic singles that you buy at Chili's. Shh. All okay. Right. What's our next one? All right. Next time we'll mention Leon and Arbiter. It's a. No, no you'll never guess. Two, two for two. One in a white, though. One in a white. Sadly, we have to actually like mention what it costs. And it has um, 
This has a very, this, this, very weird ability. Um, players can't play, search libraries. Players can't search library unless they pay two. This this is weird because this, oh, this is really so weird. This it doesn't it, use a stack. It doesn't use a stack. You just pay the mana and you can do it for the rest of the turn. Yeah. It's so weird. It's really weird. I've, I've had a few judge calls playing against it. I'm like, wait, I can pay this literally whenever and they can't respond to it. Yep. Because I was, I was wondering, I was like, can I pay it? And then they can ghost quarter me in response. Like, nope. No. Doesn't use a stack for some reason. Yeah, it's a really weird ability. It's, cool. it's um, good that it doesn't use a stack because that will cause issues like that ghost quarter thing. Yeah, it's kind of degenerate in EDH, although it ends up being more balanced because you don't have to search. Yeah. You know, you don't have to play your cultivate right now. Ugh. It's almost as annoying as even mind censored in DH. I love even mind censored in DH. It at least gives you a shot. Both, it gives you a top four. Both both guys are super annoying in DH. Not being able to search your library in DH is super painful. Stranglehold does that too. What's stranglehold? Can't search libraries and your opponents can't take extra turns. Shadow of a doubt. I mean, not being able to search your library. It turns out it's a very strong effect with things like fetch lands. Oh, yeah. All right, moving on. Purely ADH card for an honorable mention. Safi Eric's daughter. Yeah, she's the daughter of Eric. Yeah, she yeah. costs a green and a white for a 2-2. Yep, green and white for a 2-2. Sacrifice her. Next time a cre- uh, target creature would die this turn, mm-hmm. return it to the battlefield under your control. It's really good. It goes infinite with... A lot of things. There's a lot of infinite combos. Oh, yeah. Sun Titan's Sack one of the main Sun Titan, Renegade Rallyer also. Yep. It's just it's a really good infinite combo card. It also is just, just good at b- it's protecting value. Your, your threats. Save a thing from a board wipe. It doesn't even need to be... Up using an ETB effect. Yeah, saving your specifically saving your Sun Titan. Always insane with Sun Titan. Like that's Love it. the main one. I, it's oh, it. it's Sun Titan's the main combo with it. It's so good. Yeah, like Renegade Rally are even better because it's cheaper. All right, moving on. It's our final honorable mention. Our final honorable mention: Containment Priest. What does Containment Priest? Do? <laughs> I knew you were gonna say something. That's why I stopped. Containment Priest is a 2 2 for 2. If a non token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. Um, it, stops, bad, it stops reanimate. It stops. There's other effects that stops. It stops Ether Vial. Yep, stops Ether Vial. Um, I mean, an EDH stops a lot of things. <laughs> This is also in Legacy, mainly a cyborg card, which is why we put it on honorable mention. Didn't quite make it. Most of the rest of them are very main portable. On uh, the top tens. <laughs> I'm looking at number nine. <laughs> Did I not say most of the rest of them? I'm pretty sure I said most of the rest of them. Shall we get into it? Shall we get into it? Coming Number 10. Coming in at number 10. We got a classic human. Meddling Mage. Now, Meddling Mage... Is a 2-2. Is a 2-2 for a blue and a white. Yes. Uh, when it enters the... Well, as... It enters yeah, the back. Enters. Let's be clear. You cannot respond to this. This is not an ETB. Oh, many have tried and many have failed. Yes, many have tried, many have failed. Uh, I'll actually my file on two. Sure, I'll let it resolve. Sorry, We're going to play in response to your ability. No, you won't because it's not. You can't respond to it. It's on the field. Who are you I'm arguing even, with right now? Fuck you. Who are you arguing with? Uh, I'm arguing with Who hurt you? <laughs> a lot of people have tried to argue with this card. Um, you name a card as it enters the battlefield. Players cannot cast the name card. This card... Is what one of the big cards that helped humans take off in modern? There, um, let's just say right now there was a lot of Alara Reborn cards, you know, from like that we were thinking about putting on this list. Like some couple that didn't make it, like Putrid Leech. Yep, was real good. Mm-hmm. Although this isn't from Alara Reborn, but it was in Alara Reborn. I wish they had the Chris Pakula art though. It's the saddest Magic player what to ever talk- lived. What are you talking about, Chris Pakula? Do you know who Chris Pakula is? No, he's the guy who keeps the card in his wallet because he. He missed out on the Hall of Fame because of one misplay, basically. Well, shouldn't be bad. And he hates his family because they cost him <laughs> the chance to play on more events. I we're paraphrasing. I think. <laughs> I think you're paraphrasing an extreme amount, but I don't. <laughs> I don't actually know. I don't know. Anyway, um, we love you. Either Chris. way, Meddling Mage helped this deck really take off. Um, humans first got very popular uh, when Storm was at its peak in Modern a couple like, oh, a, like a year ago. So funny to see them go. Um, Melly turn- Mage named Grapeshot. Yeah, it turns out back then, well, the <laughs> list actually couldn't beat Grapeshot mainboard at all. Well, you mean Melly Mage. Oh, yeah, Melly Mage. Mage. Mage Melly Mage named Grapeshot. The, the game was over game one every single so time. So funny to me. <laughs> that yeah. They're just like, wait a minute. 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah. My de- the, the deck just wasn't configured to be a meddling mage. Which, mm-hmm. to be fair, why would it? The deck that humans didn't exist really yet. Yeah. It was just never coming back. Meddling mage so. basically wasn't in the format. Yeah. Exactly. Um, meddling mage. It's a. It's a the top. It's super powerful, but there's know. things better than it is. You'll see. There I are, don't think it's really close that this is number ten. Yeah. It also. It also. I feel like it was close with like some of the cards off this list, like containment priest. They could have easily been switched. Again, this is our opinion. The, we gave it the Let, ma- We want to. I would want to know. We do. I really want to see some people put their top tens in the bottom. I want to just look at theirs. Or just like top three, like things that should be on here. Yeah. Like I'm, there's also some cards we didn't even honorable mention that are very good. I mean, if we're if we uh. Film a video down the road and we see a comment. We'll give you a shout out and we'll respond to it. Shout out to Brian McGowan and John Jones, the only people who ever comment on our videos. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Coming in at number nine. This one, me and BZ talked about a lot. Hey, I, what th- set is this card from? Zilla Reborn. It is. Oh. <laughs> uh, we have, I'm at, this, this card's close. I think BZ really, he pushed for it to be on this list more than I did. Uh, he pushed it. I think it's real good. Uh, I think he likes it because of EDH more, too. Uh, Kwasali Pride Mage. This card's good. This card's a great cyber card in modern. That's and a 2-2 two, two for green and white, and then it has two more upsides. It has Exalted, and you can pay one and sack it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Okay. I'm not, I have no argument that the card is good. Uh, I just never really... I didn't feel like it was power, more powerful than, like, Meddling Mage. I didn't feel like it was more powerful than, like, a lot of things on here, but busy push for it. Uh, it's very good in EDH. Give it sort of a... Can be put in more decks, tiebreaker slash sees fringe legacy play slash is a green white staple in commander. Slash I'm out of things to say. Not even about it. BZ plays one green white deck. That card's not in it. Just saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a different deck. Nice staple. <laughs> I have two card decks that have green white in it. It's in the other one. What's the other one? Uh, it's in the Abzan deck and not the green white deck. Oh, okay. But anyway, that's not important. You have three green white decks. It's in one of them. <laughs> staple my ass. It is a staple. <laughs> staple puts it. It's in one of three of his green white decks. Oh my god! What a staple. It's about context. The average green white deck wants it. The average of one of three. <laughs> that's close to an average. Anyway, <laughs> what's number eight on our list? Oh, uh, <laughs> which is more powerful than Quasali Pride? Yes. Who is more powerful than Med- Meddling Mage? In an abstract sense that we're going over here. Number eight, Goblin Electromancer. This card, I actually feel like it's not as high on this list because Baral has been printed, which is pretty much... Oh, Baral's far and away better. Yeah, far and away has made this card look like poop. I mean, it's more or less the same in Modern, where you just want the instant sorceries cost one less. It's just a 2-2 for a blue and a red that says that. Yeah, but he also is not... Yeah. I mean, Brawl's got way more text, and yeah. it's better. But I'm just saying, in Modern, it basically doesn't matter. Yeah. You yeah. can still two, win on turn two, three. Two for a blue turn rash. three, you can win with either one. Yeah. Uh, he makes instant sources cost one less, like we said. Uh, All he does. Yep. And he's extremely strong. He brought Storm back into the main picture after Storm been gone. Like once Brawl came out, I was like, oh, we have this guy in, and, and we have Brawl. That's enough. Like... When he came, when did he, he came out of Ravnica, right? Yeah, RTR. Yeah, so he really, he researched Storm a lot. Um, Storm had probably been banned out like five, fifty-five bajillion times by then. <laughs> and then it sees play in Commander, any sort of blue-red spell slinging deck. Yep, Mizzix or any Niv Mizzet, whatever. Yeah, turns, there's slinging spells you probably have this guy in there. Yeah, it turns out making your spells cost one less actually very strong. It's um, ramp mm-hmm. in blue-red. It's it's even better than ramp because you just keep every single spell. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like ramp. Yeah, but it's like ramp for like seven lands sometimes. Yeah, ramp X for X is the number of spells you cast. Yeah, it's pretty that's really that's like ramp, which is really good ramp. Yep, it's insane. Uh got my electromancer making storm happen since it's cool. 2010? No, it's not. Ten? Eight? No. No, I've been the... playing for like ten years, Hold so on. Hold on. RTR came We're out. We're gonna try to guess this. We can figure this out. It wasn't 2010, I don't think. 2012? It might have been 2010. It's close. I'm going to say 2012. Was I 20? I don't know how old I was. I think I was 12. I'm lying. All right, let's look it up. All right. We'll look it up right well, now. What's your guess? I'm saying 2012. All right, we'll say 2011. No, I'm saying 2012. You're saying 2011. 2011. Yeah, that's my guess. 2012. 2012. Easy got it. You've been defeated, sir. <laughs> 
Goblin Electromancer came out in 2012. <laughs> Been a mainstay in Storm since then. Uh, Six years. Yeah, it's a good card. Jeez. It's a really strong card. It's been a while. What's number seven? I like this card. Come on, number seven. Grim Flavor of the Month. Grim He's Flavor. super good. Grim Flavor. I... A 2-2 two, two for two, actually. Oh, green and a black. Oh, green and a black. And he has Trample. And he has more things on him. And he has uh, Trample. If you have Delirium, which is four more types in your graveyard, and he gets plus two, plus two. And? And there's more things. When he deals combat damage to a player, you may look at the top three cards of your library, put any number of them... Put, them, put any number in the graveyard and put them back in any order. It's a really sweet effect. I mean, Standard didn't even really see too much consideration, but he was a house in Standard. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to hit. Like, with Marduk Pyromancer running around and everything, and there's all these creatures that just can't block a 4-4, four -four, like you can chump a Goyf, but this guy gives you card like literal card advantage, mm -hmm. card selection, and then he's still hitting them through a chump blocker. He's real strong. Yeah, if you have a delirium based deck, he's very. I'm so glad strong. there's like a delirium card, you know, besides traverse. Tra you know, there's like Turns two out every actual... deck that plays Grimflayer is now playing traverse. Is now playing traverse. Yeah, because back when yeah, Grimflayer yeah. first came out, he was just seen playing his own decks. They were trying to just put him in no mm -hmm. traverses. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and he's, he's playing like there's like this aggro Jun deck that he can see play in. Usually, he's accompanied by Mistress Bobbles because it's super easy to get delirium with that. Mm hmm. He's a very strong card. Uh, the fact is, the trample's so relevant to mm -hmm. it. You don't want this guy to ever be hitting you for damage, so you, you, so chumping him is useless. And it's such a combo with like Fatal Push. It's like if you block or double block, you got to worry about Fatal Push. All right. Anyway, moving on. Coming in at number, number six. six. This one's interesting in a lot of ways because he has, a, going on. he has a very unique effect. And he's uh, legendary. And he's a legend. His name is Gedak Teague. Green and white for a 2-2. Two -two. Green and white for a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, players cannot cast non-creature spells with converter mana cost for or greater. Mm -hmm. Also, players cannot cast non-creature spells with X in, in their, their mana, mana cost. cost. So It's really, really good. It's really good. Uh, Those are two different things. He's sometimes a at the same time. He's a hoser in modern sometimes, depending on what the format looks like. He really Damnation, hurts. Damnation, Supreme Verdict, Collective Company, Court of Calling, Conflagrate. Cryptic Command. Cryptic Command. Everything yeah. your creature deck's going to be worried about, <laughs> basically. Yep. Although, basically, stopping board wipes is one of his main things, and it's so huge. Makes them answer him before ant before and wiping Sometimes, the board. if it's turn four, or you only have four mana, you can't. You can't do both. Exactly. I have this bolt. I have this damnation. That's also, not good enough. Uh, right now, specifically, my mind turns off KCI and mm. one of KCI's big creature removers. And your explosives. Oh, yeah. Turns off with both of those cards. Oh, man, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's really good against KCI. Um, Best defense is a great offense. Yeah, he's also a 2 2. He punches them, too. Does yeah, he? I, he might kick them. Uh, he doesn't, how, why are you painting him in this box where he has to punch people? He might have, but. He's got a big old head. He's a dwarf. His picture is of. His, his, dwarf is, his head is huge. <laughs> he looks like he has a huge His body is dwarfed by his head. Oh, uh, yeah. You could say. Yeah, he, um, he's only a sideboard card, but I think what really. Helped him jump up his list to number six is the fact that in EDH, this man is an asshole. He's a general. <laughs> he's not just a general. He's just he's a general who can shut off literally like half of someone's. He's deck. a general nuisance. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he's oh. such an ass. Like, I don't want to play against this card. He's such yeah. an ass. <laughs> he is an ass. Who wants to play against that card? Oh, you feel so bad. Like, depending on what, like, when you were talking about meddling mages that feel bad, this is way more of a feel bad. Like, it shuts off at least 10% of every commander deck, I would say. Yeah, exactly. Like if you don't build, you don't build your deck with him in mind. You end up just facing him down, and they're like, "Oh, I have fifth, I have like three board wipes. I have omniscience. Oh, well, <laughs> fuck you, Galactic. Okay, I'm dead. I didn't, I don't have my chaos. I can just tell with Black Sun Zenith. Oh, oh, no. oh no. no. Yeah, exactly. He's an asshole. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to get rid of him. He's really annoying. That man. So we kept, we put him at number five. That man's an asshole. Coming in at number five, hmm. Voice of Resurgence. This card is a mainstay in modern for green white decks. Um, green white's kind of fallen on modern recently, but basically, if you're playing green white deck, you're playing Voice of Resurgence. Such a nuisance. Well, not if you're playing green white deck. If you're playing a company deck, I guess. Yeah. A company core deck, you're probably playing this card. It's just such a nuisance. It clogs up the ground, and then it dies, and it clogs up the ground even more. Mm -hmm. And it's also good against like stuff like Cryptic Command. Yep. And it makes your opponent play at sorcery speed uh, at risk of giving you a creature. Yep, I mean, the only removal spell that cleanly answers this is Path, and then 
You're giving them a land. And, yeah, you're giving them a land. They're, and they're playing those green white decks. Play so many cards you want to path anyway. Yeah, if you're playing a green white deck, then if and you, I will gladly yeah, take a land. Just oh, you just turn on my gravity township, good sir. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Well, and, like, if I can push it, then you just have a six six. I don't yep. know what to do about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's uh, so annoying. It's so hard to fight against. Um, it survives. It makes your team survive board wipes. You can go. Yep. Oh, I got donation. I lost all six of my creatures. Now I have a one one. Play two more creatures and tag you for three in the next turn. Mm-hmm. That's a very uh, always. So always going to get your equity out of this It's one of my guy. favorite cards on this list. I it's love really cool. Voice of Resurgence. Is it a hate bear? Would you count it as a hate bear? It's close. I think uh, I count it. It says you can't cast spells on instant speed, mm-hmm. basically, or yeah. you're an idiot. I mean, you end up casting spells on instant speed when you're going to be playing your cryptics. Or it doesn't matter. And yeah. you, you know you're going to be trying to write the board so you're playing your cryptics. You I've seen a few like end of turn advent of the worms, and they go, okay, I'll make a 5-5. Five, five. Uh, oh, whoops. And you'll make a 5-5 five, five too. <laughs> you get a 5 five. You get a 5-5. Five, five. Ooh. 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 So number four on this list. Mm-hmm. Oh. I originally thought would be much lower, and we had it at 9 or 10. And then we kind of talked it up, and we're like, well, it's better than this one. Well, it's better than this card. It's better than this card. I think we really didn't think this card was as good as it was because... It doesn't least, currently see much play yeah, it, anywhere. It's currently fallen out of favor quite a bit in the modern format. And it's it's two cards. It's but they are the only lords on this list. Now that I think most about lords it. are two twos for two. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like most lords aren't this. Lord of Atlantis, the original or lord. Master of the Pearl Trident. Yes, basically the same card. Uh they give your Merfolks plus one, plus one, and island walk. Yes, for blue blue. For blue blue. And well other Merfolk. They basically make your Merfolks unblockable in the decks that you're playing them in. If spreading seas and if they're just playing islands, sorry. Yep. It, this card is so strong. We were over. Yeah, we were really just, underestimating. Just really strong. I mean, there's no more deck is, without these you're, guys. With, when you see a spreading seas and your guys, you can't. And your opponent's just attacking you down for like twelve. You're just dying. Mm-hmm. They make bad cards good, also. Mm-hmm. You know, like curse catcher. Curse catcher. Not like it's a bad card because we were talking about how good it was last time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, like, that's bad. It's mediocre. It doesn't it doesn't threaten you life total wise? Yeah, but if it's taking you for two or three, it's like that's really annoying. Yeah, it really it's powering up all your like silver gill adept isn't really Yeah, it's making your it's making your two two one that drew a card into a three two that's unblockable. Mutavolt's a three three unblockable now? Yeah. Jeez. Uh, I never really played too many weird folk, but I hated I would say you Oh, hate. I'm so glad it's dead. Because I'd so much rather play against humans than Merfolk. <laughs> I don't know why, but I can never beat Merfolk. <laughs> can't be humans either to be fair that's fine but i know i know why i know why i can't be humans because it's better than my deck that i play <laughs> that's fair <laughs> anything uh, else you know to say i mean we I looked mean, it up actually in edh we look up little edh rec uh stats they had more they're in more decks than uh like the last the last three cards gadok teague or grim flayer Grim or voice there was no, more i less... think they're in they were no voice was in 2000 oh and voice... then they were in like a thousand or a thousand two hundred yeah they're not in the same like <laughs> Master of Pearl Trident is in more decks. Is is in like I don't know why. Is in like a, a hundred more decks. Because if EDH was uh, like ten years older, I would say that made sense. But it's not. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. But anyway, too, too lazy to find Lords of Atlantis. Probably. Isn't it the real... Lord of Atlantis is the reason Lords are called Lords. Oh yeah. The whole reason. Yeah, because yeah. that's the the first Lord. It was the only other Merfolk in Alpha was the one one for one with no <laughs> abilities. Yeah, something of the Pearl Trident. Yeah, Merfolk with the Pearl Trident. That was it. <laughs> it's like, get your Merfolk to get it. I was like, oh, I got it. Uh, now what? This is <laughs> now you have a 2 2. And a 2 2. <laughs> Pretty strong. Oh, God. Right. Well, I guess back then the rules were really terrible, so you could probably just play a lot of a Lord of Atlantis. Just, oh, yeah. Was there, a, was there a rule? I don't think there was a rule for how many cards you get in your deck. For like, of yeah, that might not have been. <laughs> that so sounds... you can just have like 20 Lords of Atlantis. <laughs> Right, and no zero more folk with a pearl, pearl trident. Oh, well, yeah, they, they wouldn't exist for another 10 years. No, Merfolk with a pearl trident. Oh, you have those are the only creatures in your deck, but you probably still only have like 10 Merfolk with a pearl trident. I really hope my opponent is playing islands. They're not, that's well, <laughs> better luck next time. Coming in at number three, this is like the heavy hitter. ED- I think there's a there's kind of a big gap between I think four it- through 10 and three through one. Number three, EDH. Goddess. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Fauna shot. Uh two two for two. One, one in the green. green. I was gonna say that. You did, and I also said it. One in the green. F- uh pay green, tap it, Cold. discard a creature, search your library for a creature. Put it in your hand. 
Reveal it, plus, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, fixed survival. As we, fixed as survival, we say. still insane. Uh, in the kind of decks I want to play this card, you're probably just winning if you activate it twice. Yeah, or once. Depends on what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, a lot of decks only need... Uh, Protein Hulk. Oh, sure. <laughs> so you can just get Protein Hulk. If you're playing, if you're playing competitive. Um, I know it was really good in Standard. I don't know why. I just know that it was insane in Standard. I don't know. What, fixed I don't, Survival! I don't know, I don't know what deck it was. Oh, Fixed I mean. Survival was good in Standard? Who I don't mean, thought? like, I don't know what deck. It's uh, probably some toolbox nonsense deck, because that's what it does. Yeah. Um, we don't care that it was good in Standard, but for you, now you know, yeah, but, it was really good in Standard. Yep. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the main thing is, this card is... So good in EDH. Absolute must kill. Absolute must kill every single time. You don't want anyone to untap with it, and you're getting your very best creature for the turn. It's, Sometimes it's, just... It can be two upsides. Yeah. Put I'm... a creature in my graveyard, get it. If you're, yeah, if you're playing or a graveyard. Or even deck. if you just, like, you pitch a fatty, and then you get Carver Guide to get it back. <laughs> That's pretty good, too. Yeah, there's so many things this card can do. Um so many different ways it can be insane. Sometimes you just untap on turn three, you have four mana because, you know, you ramp a little bit. It's EDH. I think that's reasonable. Oh, you, you just discard any creature and get a Solemn because you just need some more ramp. And you just want... That's your... That would, the best play in your deck, you can go get it half the time because that, you can I mean, yeah, just... But, but if you're playing Fauna Shaman, you are getting the best play. Not, uh, your best top deck, basically. There could always be a spell that's better. But, but if you're saying, in a creature deck, probably your best play is a creature. True. It's... This card's bonkers. You yeah. need to, if you don't have it, and you need to try it. It's only like um, 15 bucks. I don't think I played in any of my decks. Um, none of my decks really seem... Well, you have two. One of them has green. One of them has green, and it doesn't fit that Not really. style really but at all. This isn't about us. That's why it's number three. It is number three. What's number two? Number two. Number two is real weird. No, no, no. So, BZ said, the gap, no, this is, no. BZ said the gap was between three, or between three, three and, and four. four. The gap is really between. No, no, it's like... Ten this is through four, three, and then two and one are up two here. and one are way above the others. They <laughs> are crazy. We, these are far and away kind of, the best two two drops. I thought we started the list. We're like, okay, one and two are locked. Yeah, these are one and two. Um, and it is debatable which one goes where, but starting with number two, this is the only enchantment on our list. <laughs> Idolon of the Great Rebel. <laughs> red, red for a two two. Uh, whenever a player casts a spell with mana cost three or less, you take two damage. Yes, this card is. Oh, really? This card, man, is so good in burn. Uh, it only really goes in burn, but it's so it's good, good when you're in there. That deck. It's the mayor of Burn Town. A lot of the things that, like, so if you can't answer this card, so a lot of times it's two mana shock because they, you just answer it, but also mm. it's a shock that's eating your opponent's card. Also, yeah, and they have to use mana on it when they <coughs> probably don't want to because a two two isn't really that threatening. Yeah. And like sometimes you're just like, oh, I don't have an answer. I'll play out like a two drop to block it, but now you've taken two from it. It's already done its thing. It's it just keeps it then, stays on the field. I mean, everything in modern legacy for the most part costs three or less, especially yeah, in legacy. I mean legacy we can basically everything except for like force of will. Yeah, everything but force of will and gosh. Jace the mind sculptor. Gosh. Teferi. I don't, I don't know, I'm just thinking of things. Teferi? Like <laughs> what kind of legacy do you play? Miracles? Eh? With Teferi? Eh? With Teferi. I saw LSV grinding it the other day. Yeah, that doesn't make it right. No, it doesn't. <laughs> that does not. That's what I saw. Anyway, I don't have the Great Rebel, though. Mm. It takes this list to a whole new Rebel. Feels good to be running from the Rebel. It's a good card. Mm. It's a really, really strong magic card. Taking two every time you cast a spell, basically, is rough. Uh, especially when you're facing down lightning bolts and lava spikes. If you can't answer it and you plan on playing spells, you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. Bas that's basically what it is. Yeah, like, it's it's a must answer. It, this, this card like, calls I don't, I don't for know what, what percentage every of games burn decks win when this doesn't die. But it's got to be like 70-something percent, right? Or yeah, more? the card just takes over. It's just so hard to answer. I mean, burn only needs to deal 20. It's not so hard to answer. It's, it's so hard to beat when you don't answer right. it. And even then, it's using your resources and making you God, cast two spells. Take four. Now they've cast. Now they've cast a Burrow's Charm, and they have a two-two. Mm -hmm. What if it hits you? Now it's dealt six. Sorry. Can I just? It can just. It just scale so well. It doesn't. The longer it stays in the field, you also take two. It's symmetrical. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't I mean the burn deck just doesn't care. 
You're going to try to be dead by turn six to, or less. This card is really interesting in the Burn Mirror, oh, where yeah. you really end up in these weird, weird, weird situations where you're casting Lightning Bolt, deal three to you, deal two to me. So I don't even want to think about that because it probably comes down to who draws more Lightning Helixes. It's too much math. Yeah, it's really silly. Just don't play Burn. You want to do that math. Don't play Burn versus Burn. It's a silly matchup. <laughs> Coming in at number one. one. We think it's better. I think it's better by a significant amount. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Then the rest are done. <laughs> scavenging? Yeah some, yeah, some people might disagree, ooze. but scavenging is... This card's insane. This card does, does, it, all. It, does it all. It does so much. 2-2 two, two for one and a green. 2-2 two, two for one and a green. Pay green. Pay a green. Colon. Exile target card. From a graver. This is that's super important. Oh, it doesn't yeah. just exile creatures, which is where it gets its benefit. People think that it does. Exile target card. If it's a creature, you gain one life and and put a plus one plus one counter on it. Holy okay. crap. Let's talk about everything this card does. This card is graveyard hate. Comes down early. It is is an early drop for your deck. Stabilizes. Yep. Stable uh it gains you life for the matches where you need to gain life. Can be the biggest thing in play. In, in in late game, it tends to be the biggest thing in play. It'll just eat a ton of things in the graveyard, just be the biggest creature in play. This it can turn off cards in your opponent's hand. Snapcaster Mage doesn't do anything. Yes, it does so much. Now, very early in the game, this card is not super good. Um, oh, but I, I I've, I'm trying out just not playing it on turn two. It dies every single time. It's so bad on turn two. Yeah, but, but literally every other turn of the game, even on turn three. Oh, yeah, it's so much with different. One activation, it's so much different. It's insanely good. This card does everything. Burners so well with Inquisition and Thoughtseize and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, like, it goes in the toolbox deck. Get, your, get their Lingering Souls. It's also amazing in EDH. Yes. It's unbelievable. We have three times as many graveyards to go through. Yep. You can, I guess twice as many graveyards to go through. It counters a lot of spells in EDH because there's a lot of reanimate. Type. I mean, it's just going to have to die. I can't imagine a game where this survives that long in EDH and everyone gets to do their thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it would be weird if no one was interacting with the graveyard in a four-player game of EDH. Because he should be. Because that's how this works. The graveyard is a huge resource in EDH. You should use it. Use it or lose it. You should. Use um, it or squeeze it. Uh, Scavenger ah, is man. God. I mean, it's just... The th- it, it hates out graveyard decks. Okay, one. Hates on graveyard decks. Hates on cards in the graveyard. No, just hates on cards in the graveyard. Hates on graveyard decks. Yes. Completely destroys them. Gains life against things like burn. Completely... It can let you restabilize in the later game of, against Burn if you have like three. Um, I mean, gaining life against Burn just counters some of their spells, basically. Well, yeah. Um, this card gets so huge so fast, it can outclass everything on the field very quickly. Especially Termogoy. Like, yeah. It, it, yeah. Oh, there's a Planeswalker? It counters no, not out, anymore. Yeah, it, it counters out Termogoy. It just. This card is a powerhouse for two mana. Everywhere. It, everywhere it is, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean. Legacy, not so much, but it doesn't really see much play in Legacy, but Green. Green doesn't really see that much play in Legacy when it comes to, like, creatures. Goyf is, like, the one Mm -hmm. green creature that sees play in Legacy. It's not much after that. Elves has died. (laughs) Death Rite Shaman saw a lot of play. That was a green creature. Mm Mm-hmm. What happened? Uh, Why did everybody just stop playing it? I, maybe it must be a meta shift. The, the meta completely shifted away from, from the best card in, all right. ever. All right. So that was... <laughs> this was our top ten. This was our top we kept 10. it a little bit shorter than last time. More succinct. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's okay. It's a good list. Yeah, definitely yeah. let us know if you disagree. Or There's a lot of cards I can if see. If you want to rearrange. or if you I think can see that, a lot of spots like, that can be rearranged. Um, or if you're like, hey, Putrid Leech is the best thing ever. Why is it on this if list? If you think Putrid Leech should be you. on this list, we'll tell you you're wrong. Oh, but we'll tell you nicely. Yeah, you're wrong. Anyway, end the video. Yeah, do all do all the do all of the positive you're YouTube wrong. community things. They're actually if you look before below like, this, subscribe. Just look below this video. Hit right the bell. Now, there's there's a comment section. Nobody wants you to know about it. Comment comment section below. Like comment subscribe, bell. <laughs> just just bell. Drake Drake bell. Drake bell. Bye, Jake Bell. All right. We'll see you next time.